Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 19 of the Atlas Annuity Podcast. I am your host, Marty Becker, and the owner of Atlas Financial Strategies in St. Louis, Missouri, where we specialize in safe money retirement strategies. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about average returns versus actual returns. I hear that all the time. People say to me, the market, the quote, the market averages 7%. And like I said, I hear that all the time. And my response is always, I don't care what it averages. I want to know what the actual return will be. Because there's a huge difference between an average return and an actual return. The reason this is so important to understand is because if you have a million bucks at retirement and your statements have shown or you've been told this entire time that the market averages 7%, you think that million dollars is going to produce $70,000 a year for the rest of your life and it's going to keep the million dollars intact. That is absolutely not how it works at all. And you have to ask yourself, why do you think the advisors tell you that you can only take 4% if the portfolio is going to average 7%? That's because they know there's a difference between average returns and actual returns. And by the end of this episode, you will too. Now, if you've invested $10,000 per year for 30 years and you are getting a 7% return, you should have over a million dollars. And I talk to a lot of people and a lot of them do have over a million dollars, but as a percentage, the vast majority of Americans have quite a bit less than a million dollars saved for retirement. And again, why is that? Why don't they have the million dollars that they were told they were going to have? Because their statements are telling them that they've averaged 7% or higher. And again, that's because there is a huge difference between average return and actual return. This is why you look at your statements and you wonder to yourself, man, my returns look great. Why don't I have more money? So let's take a look at an example here. Let's say you have $100,000 and your advisor doubles your money the first year. Then they lose half. Then they double it again. And then they lose half. You would look at your statement and the average return on that statement is going to say 25% but your actual return. And again, you're looking at your statements and you're like, man, I got a 25% return. Why don't I have more money? Like you feel like something's wrong. You just can't quite put your finger on it. So maybe you even reach out to your advisor and ask them what this is all about, why you don't have more money with these type of returns. And maybe they're like, hey man, what do you want from me? I just got you a 25% return on your money. And then maybe you start thinking like, you're the crazy one in this scenario. I can assure you that you are not crazy. Again, it's the difference between average returns and actual returns. And it gets even worse because you can actually lose money in your account and still show a net positive on your average return. So for example, that scenario we just looked at, if we include management fees of 1.5%, you actually lost money. So you have a negative net return but your statement still shows an average return of 25%. Why am I even talking about this today and, and why is it relevant to you? Because in the last episode, we talked about how chasing interest rates is a huge mistake, okay? Chasing return on income. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make in the retirements. So what you need to be focusing on is ROI, reliability of income, and something you may have never heard of before, which is internal rate of return. So internal rate of return is the calculation that determines your actual rate of return, not your average, but your actual rate of return, or more importantly, what rate of return would you need to get every single year on a portion of your money to provide you with a certain interest rate growth or a guaranteed income which we would determine based on defining a purpose of your money. But here's what I mean by that. So what if you were super, super lucky in your timing and you started investing $10,000 per year into the S&P 500 back in 1992 
when we had some massive returns for the first several years. Now, I should mention that most advisors will never beat the returns of the S&P 500. And if they do, they maybe do it once or twice, but none of them consistently outperform the S&P 500. So this would be like the absolute best scenario possible. But let's say you did get the full returns of the S&P 500 plus dividends, and then you retired in 2023. So basically, you would have accrued a little over $1.2 million. And you'll notice that your average rate of return would have been just over 11%. But your actual internal rate of return was right about 7.5%. Now, that's still great. But that's a far cry from a full 11% return every year. Average return versus actual return. So now in this scenario, let's say you're retired, okay? You're out of phase one of your financial life, which is accumulation. And now you're moving into phase two, which is decumulation. So now you have to decide how are you going to start taking this money out for income? So what we know is based on the sequence of returns risk, which I'll talk about more in the next episode, you can no longer keep all of your money in stocks like you did during phase one. So this is why most advisors put you into a 60-40 portfolio to help you limit the risk of the sequence of returns that you could get if you were 100% in stocks. We also know that you should not take out more than 4% per year of the total amount that you have at retirement, which in this scenario is $48,000 per year. And that may even be too much. And we'll talk about that in another episode too. But we would also want some inflation built in, which will set that at about 2.5% every year forward. So in this scenario, with the 60-40 portfolio, you go the route of the traditional retirement plan and you run out of money by the age 89. Now, this is just a very simplistic overview of how this works. I understand that you're not going to pull out exactly 2.5% every single year to offset inflation, but you need to understand this concept. So during this time frame of 2000 to 2000, and these are the actual returns of a 60-40 portfolio, and I'm using this time frame because it's always in your best interest to see what a worst case scenario would look like. You retired in 2023, you got returns from 1992, and now your retirement returns are based on two. Th in this scenario, using the returns of a 60 40 portfolio from the year 2000 to present, and again, this is a worst case scenario, your average return would have been 6.28%. However, your actual rate of return or your internal rate of return was only 3.4%. And this is why you ran out of money. Now, if you would have gotten the actual return of 6.28%, then you would have been totally fine. In fact, you would have had more money at the end of your life than what you started with. But this is not how it works. I know it. Your advisor knows it but you may not know it. And this is the impression that people have when it comes to retirement planning, that this is how it works. And it couldn't be further from the truth. Okay, so what is the solution? So how do we have the guarantees or the reliability of income, ROI, along with not having to sacrifice growth opportunities for net worth in the future and inflation offset. If you're watching this on video, let's look at an example here. So if we took approximately 690,000 of your 1.2 million and quote, bought you a guaranteed joint lifetime income of $48,000 per year. And you may be saying to yourself, you want to take 690 grand of my money and quote, lock it up in an annuity. So I'm going to get more into that lockup objection in another episode. But for the sake of this episode, let's just say, yes, we're going to lock it up and we're going to get you a guaranteed $48,000 for the rest of your life, no matter what. And that's for both you and your spouse. And why $48,000? Because remember, that's the absolute most that you should be taking 
from a portfolio that's worth $1.2 million on the day of your retirement. Now, this is where internal rate of return becomes very important for you to understand because we can actually do the math here. The question now becomes, if I took that same $690,000 and put it into an alternative investment, and I don't care what the investment could be or would be, that's totally irrelevant at this point, but what would that investment have to return with a 1.5% management fee every single year to pay me $48,000 per year and assure me that I would have enough principal to last even if I lived to 100. So look at this. You would have to get just over an 8.5% return every single year with no down years ever just to get the same $48,000 per year and make sure that the principal would last long enough to continue to pay that. And nothing else can do that on a guaranteed basis. Not stocks, not bonds, not ETFs, not crypto, not precious metals. Nothing else can provide you with that much guaranteed income for that long. Now, you may also be asking, okay, what about inflation? Because we're noticing here that $48,000 is a level income forever. Remember, you still have $510,000 outside of the annuity that you could actually get very aggressive with in the stock market and just pull the inflation amount as you needed it. So even if we went into a horrible sequence of return scenario, and again, we're going to look at a worst case scenario here, but then we'll look at a, a best case scenario too. But going back to the year 2000, when the market lost about 50% of its value in a three-year period, you would still have almost $150,000 left at age 100. And remember, going the traditional route in the 60-40 portfolio, you were actually out of money. At so what if this wasn't a doomsday scenario and we actually had a strong market in the early years of your retirement? Was there an opportunity cost to the Atlas annuity strategy? Meaning, did you miss out on anything? Let's take a look here. In the same scenario, if we took 690000 of your $1.2 million and we had 510000 left over to leave in the market just to take the additional money from the portfolio to help offset inflation, looking at a best case scenario, going back to the returns of 1992, we looked at in the accumulation phase, you would have almost... <laughs> You would have almost $12 million by the time you turned 100. $12 million. Now, obviously, this is a best case scenario. And if you do have some huge years early in your retirement, then obviously we can make some spending adjustments to be able to enjoy some more money. But since all of this is out of our control, in what scenario or what sequence the returns are going to happen once you retire, we want to hope for the best but we're going to plan for the worst. So that way, even if you do go into a negative sequence of returns early in your retirement, we know you're still going to have money left over. And even worst case scenario, nuclear option, even if you run out of money, you're never going to run out of income. So wrapping all this up, because this was a pretty in-depth episode but let's talk about what we learned, what we talked about in this episode. There is a difference between average returns and actual returns. We learned that counting on average returns can have dire consequences. We learned that the internal rate of return is what really counts. We learned that you can actually calculate what your internal rate of return would have to be to match an income annuity. And it's probably not going to be beaten by anything else. But we also learned we do not have to sacrifice opportunity while at the same time mitigating the risk of a worst case scenario. The thing I like about doing this podcast is it's all recorded. So that way you can always go back and listen to it as many times as you need to really grasp the genius about implementing these strategies into your retirement planning. Now, that's not 
me saying that Marty Becker's a genius because I did not develop these products. I just did a lot of work to understand them and to learn how to effectively use them in people's retirement strategies. And this was really born out of trying to solve my own personal retirement crisis, if you want to call it that. I still have a long ways to go. But if you haven't heard the backstory on how or why I even ended up in this industry and working with annuities, I would say, please go back to episode number one. So you can kind of learn a little about a little bit about the history of me and the beginning of Atlas Financial Strategies. And then I would also recommend going to atlasannuity.com under the video section and watching my video series, 20% More Spendable Income in Retirement, because I do about four different case scenarios in that video series. And most people can find one of those scenarios to relate to. As always, I enjoyed being with you this week. If you found this information helpful, please like, subscribe, and share this information to help us spread the word and teach people how to approach retirement in a smarter and safer way. Again, this is Marty Becker, wishing you the very best in your financial education, and we'll see you in the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Atlas Annuity Podcast. All information presented is for educational purposes only and is not a recommendation to implement any tax strategy, nor is it a recommendation to buy, sell, or transfer any security or insurance products. Atlas Financial Strategies Incorporated is an insurance-only licensed entity, and any decisions to buy or sell securities should be discussed with a licensed securities advisor, and any tax strategy should be discussed with a licensed tax professional. Past performance of any strategies or products mentioned are not a guarantee of future returns. For any other questions or concerns, please go to www.atlasannuity.com.